what is the difference between eagles and vultures? Eagles and vultures are probably the two most famous birds of prey in the skies, and both of them have well-known reputations built up over millennia. But how does one differentiate between the two? Are there any noteworthy differences at all? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at our fine feathered friends. Eagles Eagles are large birds of prey from the Accipitridae family, primarily in the Aquila genus, although others are classified under different genera. The birds in Aquila are more commonly referred to as true eagles. While non-Aquila birds are only classified as eagles if they are large enough to hunt and catch vertebrates at least 19.7 inches long. The term eagle is actually the Anglo-Norman translation of the Latin word aquila. In French, the word is agla, while Spanish and Portuguese speakers use aguila and aguilla respectively. In Old English, urn was used before eagle became more common. Eagles figure prominently in human cultures. They are a common symbol of strength, nobility, war, nationhood, and all-round excellence. Countless traditional peoples have revered them as deities and supernatural symbols since time immemorial. All in all, there are 68 species alive today, with several of them highly endangered thanks to factors like habitat loss from human activity. As far as distribution, you are far more likely to run into eagles in Africa, Europe, and Asia. About 54 species are native to the Old World, while there are 11 in the Americas and 3 in Australia. Habitats are extremely varied, as the birds are found everywhere from dense tropical jungles to the middle of scorching sand deserts to icy tundras. Wooded forests, grasslands, and mountainous climes are also prime eagle real estate. Eagles are among the largest of all raptorial birds, only behind vultures and condors. As such, full-grown specimens often rule the skies as apex predators, fearing nothing from other birds. A number of renowned ornithologists have even documented how eagles are the only birds of prey that don't constantly scan over their shoulders to watch out for predators. Even during focus-intensive activities like hunting or mating, eagles hardly bother watching their backs because they are certain no airborne creature would dare start problems. These killer birds are best described as death from above, given their ruthlessness, sizes, speed, and weaponry. Eagles are characterized by sharp curved beaks and even sharper talons. The beaks are designed to rip flesh when eating or in battle, while the talons allow the birds to grip and impale prey or perch onto various perches. Broad wings and super pronounced chest muscles allow for rapid takeoff and acceleration while keen eyes can spot a rabbit's birthmark from over a hundred yards. Of course, with such diversity among eagles, you also get different strengths and preferences. Some species, like the golden eagle, Aquila quercetus, have a fairly varied menu – snakes, other birds, and mammals. Others, like the fish eagles of the Haliaetus genus, specialize in fish and other aquatic animals. There are also birds like the harpy eagle, Harpy harpija which are especially tuned to catch tree-dwelling mammals, like sloths and monkeys. In most cases, an eagle's hunt follows a simple order – spot target, take off or swoop, grab, kill, and eat. Many times, victims hardly know what hit them, and those that do can do little and less to stop it. However, hunting strategies do vary even for a particular species. The golden eagle or Africa's martial eagle are fine examples of this. Both of these birds can simply swoop down and grab chickens or hares and kill them when they land again. Or they can swoop down on smaller prey like rats or meerkats and deliver crushing blows to the head with their talons in mid-flight. Or they can harass small mountain goats to fall off cliffs and to their deaths. In fact, eagles are very aware that not all of their prey can fly. Gravity-aided kills are quite common. Eagles often take terrestrial prey like rabbits, chickens, or puppies to extraordinary heights before dropping them to let gravity do its thing. Some species even do this to break tortoise shells so they can access the vulnerable flesh within. That said, prey and hunting strategies depend on factors like the environment and the size of the eagle in question. The largest species in terms of sheer weight and bulk are the Philippine eagle, 
Pithecophaga jeffreyi, and the harpy eagle, which average weights of 18.25 pounds and 16.25 pounds respectively. These two also reign supreme in body length, with both measuring about 3 feet 3 inches in length. When it comes to average wingspan, the white-tailed sea eagle, Halaetus albacilla, comes out on top. On average, these soaring fish lovers measure 7 feet 2 inches from wingtip to wingtip. You'll find that the biggest species like the harpy and Philippine eagles have fairly short wingspans. That's because shorter wings are better for maneuvering within the thick forest they live in. Eagles native to more open areas can afford relatively longer wings because they rely on soaring high to scout for prey. Of course, live prey isn't the only thing eagles are on the lookout for. Like most predators, eagles are not above scavenging, especially when times are lean. The birds are experts at reading the skies and following other scavenger-type birds like ravens, crows, and vultures to easier pickings. They can often scare other birds away from the carrion and even carry the food away if possible. In fact, eagles are not unfamiliar sights at human garbage dumps, where they forage for leftovers and the rats that scurry after them. Vultures The classification is just as muddled and confusing as that of eagles, if not more. For starters, there are two main classifications, Old World vultures and New World vultures. Old World vultures fall under the Accipitridae family along with eagles, hawks, kites, and buzzards. These vultures are further split into two subfamilies, Gypatini and Egyptini. Notable Gypatini species include the Egyptian vulture, Neophron percnopterus, bearded vulture, Gypatus, and palmnut vulture. Gypohyrix angloensis. The Egypiani subfamily is home to the most species, with notable examples like the common hooded vulture, Necrocertus monachus, cape vulture, Gyps coprotheris, and lappet faced vulture, Torbos tracleotis. As far as New World vultures, we have one family, Cathartidae. This is made up of five vulture species and the two extent condor species. All in all, there are 23 species of vultures and condors in the world. Unlike eagles, vultures have a less than sterling reputation. Few cultures have ever used them to represent strength or nobility. Instead, they are most commonly linked with death, decay, or bad vibes in general. It would be hard to find anyone whose favorite animal is a vulture. Which is pretty unfair, given the important ecological role these birds play. You see, these infamous scavengers are kind of like nature's recycling facility. They speed up the circle of life by consuming the decaying and nasty flesh of dead things. Without them, disease-causing bacteria would spread and cause problems for many other animals and their environments. Almost all vultures live primarily on carrion. The Gypatini Old World vultures break this rule though, as they are excellent hunters. The palm nut vulture is even weirder thanks to its fruit-heavy diet. However, carrion is the go-to for all other Old World birds and all of the New World ones. They even lack the curved toes and talons typical of birds of prey, instead sporting flatter feet and blunted claws that are suited for waddling and hopping along the ground. Their beaks, though, are typically raptorial. Using their beaks, vultures can tear into the toughest hides and often use their flat feet to plant themselves for maximum leverage when tearing chunks off of corpses. Another common trait among vultures is baldness of the head and legs. The dominant theory behind this is that the lack of feathers in these areas prevents blood, guts, and gore from sticking to the birds, which in turn minimizes the spread of bacteria. Vultures even urinate on their own legs, and the high concentrations of uric acid also kill germs. Another theory is that the bald extremities aid the birds with thermal regulation which also makes sense because a lot of them live in fairly warm regions of the world. The peeing on the legs may also play a role in cooling down. Vultures are socially complex birds that are comfortable in flocks, in pairs, or alone. Most groupings are often opportunistic and mainly revolve around a particular feeding site or the promise of one. After all, keeping an eye out for other vultures is often the easiest way to find food. Like eagles, their vision is superb. Combined with their lofty soaring, vultures can spot dead or dying animals from great distances. The Rupel's vulture, Gyps rupelli, is a standout soarer capable of altitudes of 37,000 feet. 
When the opportunity arises, they swoop down in circular patterns, which allows them to keep an eye out for nearby predators and bigger scavengers. Because of increased human content, many vultures have also learned to stick close to human settlements. Dead livestock and garbage sites are gold mines for them, and much easier to find than food in the wild. Another interesting thing about vultures is that some of them are the largest of the birds of prey, full stop. The biggest vultures, like the Andean condor, are significantly larger than the biggest eagles in both weight and wingspan. The Andean condor, for instance, can reach 33 pounds in weight and sport wings nearly 11 feet wide. These proportionally larger wingspans are the foundation of vultures' incredible soaring. Though capable of soaring higher and longer than eagles, vultures generally have an unrushed way of flying. After all, most of the food they eat is already dead, so there's no need to swoop down with explosive force like eagles. Other notable differences Though both eagles and vultures boast extraordinary eyesight, vultures can also call upon a pretty good sense of smell to help them find food. Additionally, vultures have less pronounced chest muscles than eagles, which do much more low-level flying and swooping during hunts. Vultures mostly flap during takeoffs and landings, otherwise they just surf the wind on their way up and down, which doesn't require much chest power. Eagles also beat out vultures for sheer brute strength. Large jungle eagles like the harpy need this strength to wrestle large prey like monkeys from branches or haul fish from water. Vultures are pretty strong too, but they are no match for their more predatory distant cousins.